Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we will be listening to the sixth part of what if Deku didn't believe All Might and remained quirkless. If you enjoy, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing down below and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get notified when videos go live. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Chapter 11, A Student's Guide to Punching a Hero in the Back By Shinsu Hitashi Will not work when trying to attempt a crime scene. If you do that he doesn't take the blame for your broken wrist. Yuriko laid on her sofa watching as the messages from the Wanna group chat flooded in. Everyone was agreeing to meet up for the sports festival but she kept holding out on joining them. She considered messaging Midoriya and asking him for decided against it. She wasn't leaning on him and she refused to. Figure it out had been his answer for a question he was most invested in. He'd straight up turn her down, especially when his success as a hero lied in this festival. Midoriya said he didn't want to be a her. That could change if he's standing against her in any of rounds with her whole strategy in his hands. He already knew she had a connection to All Might, he could already take her down. She kicked one of her legs up and sent a message to her mentor. Yurika, hey All Might are you free to train for the festival? Yagi Toshinori, I've used up all my time for today but I can meet tomorrow if you need so. Yurika, oh okay, any advice for Ofa other than clench your butt cheeks? Yagi Toshinori, I don't know young Yurika. My mentor is better for this. He'll be extending you an offer for internships no matter your performance at the sports festival. Do not worry about it, smiley face, Eureka, okay. She placed her phone down on her coffee table and sighed. Her plan had been to go with a hero who specialized in combat. She had always versioned herself a rescue hero. If All Might saw her as the next symbol of peace she needed to know some form of combat. It was even more important as one for all didn't manifest into super strength. Punching the villains into the oblivion wasn't an option. Her phone continued to buzz an obnoxious amount. One aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
other the last few months of training it had gained a fair amount of scars. All Might was certain her future lied in having some strength but it felt wrong. She still couldn't throw a decent hit if her hands were anything to go by. The lack of training would only get her so far. Finals were about showing her skills and her quirks already held so much control over who she is. She needs to set herself apart. In a fight with Izawa she needs to stand a chance instead of being useless within seconds. In a fight against Bakugo she needs to be able to dodge and run. God, she was pathetic in anything but her quirk. Odds were she would be against Shinsu or Midoriya and both boys had trained as if they were quirkless. It would prove them well with a real human. Anyways, if she had always wanted to be a secret agent for the government, or a not so secret, she had to be better. Yurika rolled off the couch and grabbed her keys off her table. She pocketed her phone in her trousers pocket and unraveled the earphones. She plugged them into her ears and slammed her door. Her endurance was lacking in anything but quirk power. The jog was to measure herself. There was no clue what Yue would throw at them and running 5 kilometers didn't seem like enough. The slowed down tunes played as she ran around her local area. The surroundings were still unfamiliar despite having lived there for 10 months now. The route to the beach and the park were memorized but her local town felt miles away. She kept pushing onwards ignoring the burning feelings in legs. Someone could have set fire to them and she wouldn't know the difference. The beach was coming up, the sand was wet from where the tide came in. It was still in the process of coming out. Eureka grinned as he threw herself over the ledge and barely landed. Her legs were jelly but still held her own thanks to the lightened weight she had herself. It had been something she found out herself during the school's high jump. She didn't give herself enough time to fall on the ground. She walked to the water giving herself the small break before her feet submerged in the water. The water was cool. It washed any of the dirt off her shoes, Eureka relished in it before she pushed off again splashing in the waves. The work of pulling through the waves made the run double of what it was. She wouldn't move back to the land for anything. She kept pumping until her watch beeped. The rocks at the end were close enough and what would going an extra mile do to hurt her? She walked up to the rocks and planted one of her hands onto it cheering for herself for getting that far. The pride was childish. Eureka couldn't help giggling at how elevated she felt running the two and a half kilometers so fast. She hadn't been unfit but that felt unreal. Lying on the gate separating her from clambering up the rocks she let herself enjoy the moment. Who knew exercise was so fun? She hadn't. This was why she enjoyed the training, because the grueling work set her hormones off like she was hot. What would it be like when she got home? The sofa felt so far away but she wanted to collapse on it. Thinking of that, she pulled herself back up and began to jog again. She let the wind dry her shoes and socks as she jogged along. When Eureka pulled up at her house again everything was spinning. She let herself fall onto the seat. Her shoes were still on. Kicking them from the seat would lead to something in her house cracking and that was the last thing she needed. She pulled out her phone to see if any new messages had come through despite being too tired to send any. The group chat had been as active as ever with several of her friends getting lost on the way. Eureka hadn't been pinged since allowing her to mark them all as red before continuing on with her day. The only other message came from All Might. She pulled up the chat. Yagi Toshi Nori, just wondering if you would want to train again? I could help you figure out one for all maybe. Eureka, you don't assume that it works differently for me than it did for you because I had a quirk beforehand? Like, anti-gravity got really strong and my high jump skills have only doubled since receiving it. Yagi Toshi Nori, I remember something similar with my mentor. It's possible your quirk has merely increased in power which would make it stronger. If you're anything like me, I'd say you've barely reached half your potential so far. Eureka, I'm sorry what? Am I just going to fly around like a pre-quirk hero or what's her name? Arg hang on lemme google it. Eureka, Nana Shimura. Am I gonna be like her? Yagi Toshinori, how'd you know her? Eureka, she was a hero with a quirk like mine and wasn't a rescue hero. She was basically my idol, why'd you ask? Yagi Toshinori, no reason young Eureka. Flying sounds like a marvelous idea. If you can't do it naturally I'm sure support can help in some way. Okako had a feeling there was more to floating involved to why her mentor wanted to know how she knew of Nana Shimura. There was no point pondering over it. She fell asleep on the seat a few seconds later. Shinsu knew he wasn't fit enough for the sports festival. Yes he could always fall back on his quirk. It didn't feel right, 
not when he trying to help prove quirks didn't have to be everything. He peered down the stairs where his foster mother would be cooking some kind of European food. Hitashi bit his lip and filtered through the possibilities on what to do for the event. The last time he had done a fitness test, he had failed miserably. He had been up in the middle of the pack but that wouldn't be enough while at UA. At the hero school he had to be at the top when people used their quirks and that was almost impossible. Trying felt stupid but Shinsu had already gotten so far. It was would be worse to stop, after all nothing was crueler than ending a dream midway. He pulled his phone out to rewatch fighting techniques. That was the best he could do as his guardian refused to let him go outside. Heaven forbid he accidentally smash a glass. He was looking to improve not a one-way ticket to being grounded. He lay on his bed and sent a message to the group chat. Barking dogs seldom bite. Catnip SMTH, guys I'm BBB bored PLS what can I do to train? FRE SHA VACA DO, ask Eurica's teacher I don't know. He seems like the kinda guy to train kids in gen ed. Catnip SMTH, no. That means talking to people. Uurica, bucko. You're gonna have to talk to PPL when you transfer. Get used to it now. Catnip SMTH, no. I am not asking Eraserhead to train me. He'll think I'm batshit crazy. FRE SHA VACA DO, LMAOOOO. I'll ask for you, smiley face, Catnip SMTH, you seem so sure of yourself. Are you bluffing to get me to talk to him first? So I don't get secondhand embarrassment or shit. You worka. He's seen the text. You got left on read bitch. Catnip SMTH, you're joking. Fuck me Doria your plan worked. I'm asking him when we go into school TMMR. FRE SHA VACA do, knew I could break you, smiley face, Ty Eurica. Catnip SMTH, what? Uurica, you can't tell whether people have read texts or not Shinsu. He hadn't read it I just lied. Catnip SMTH, this is bullying. FRE SHA VACA DO, crying face, so sad, Alexa played Despacito. Uwurika has sent a link to the chat. Uwurika, your wish is my command. Catnip SMTH, would be funny if you were actually called Alexa. Uwurika, STFU. The purple haired boy chucked his mobile at the end of the bed in fake annoyance. None of his friends could see him he hoped the message still got across that he was annoyed. Talking to Eraserhead felt so pathetic but having Midoriya ask seemed like a one-way trip to hell. Prepare for the worst they said as he was called down for the family dinner. Hope for the best. Hitashi returned to his room after eating with everyone. Nothing against his family but right now he needed to try and sleep the rest of the day away. He refused to get cold feet before he even stood in front of Aizawa. He woke up the next morning with the dread still deep in his stomach. Shinsu rolled out of bed knowing exactly what would happen today. It was surprising he had the energy to roll out. The pathetic attempt at sleep failed because the world didn't hate him enough. He lay under the warm blankets unable to get comfortable. His mind wheeled on about how terribly today was going to go. It had come too slowly. If he had snuck downstairs and taken some of the sleeping pills he might have not been in this situation. The seven hours he wasted being awake would have passed. That was how brains perceived time. If Shinsu had slept it would feel as if he had already been rejected but no. Instead he was on a bus, in a crumpled uniform trying to not fall over as he gripped the railing. This was the first part of his journey and he was already dead on his feet. Hitashi held himself up letting his eyes closed. He would be jolted awake at every stop so it was useless really. The minute or two of relief brought a sense of grogginess that wouldn't let him live. He practically had signed a death promise. It was unfair. The bus pulled at the last space sending Shinsu flying off the vehicle. He stumbled onto the train station. His feet dragged behind him but he still climbed on the train. This time sleeping wasn't an option unless ending up hours away from his school sounded like a good idea. It didn't. He schemed around for a seat. Once he found one, he slipped in and sat there. Hitashi flipped his phone on to get a better idea of the time. The blue light could also do a wonder at stopping him from blinking and therefore blanking out. No messages but a notification from one of the pre-quirk arcade games. The 2010s had some great games and Don't Touch the Spikes was the perfect example of them. Unlocking all the birds had been impossible. The connection to the new Facebook was fractured. He had gotten far enough through the game it no longer daunted him. His high score had been set in stone since that night he played it for 7 hours straight. 
It had been an attempt to collect all the candies. He was proud about it actually. He continued to play on the device until the caller announced the stop for Yue would be coming soon. Shinsu pocketed his phone and looked up from the stop. The train was braking and the carriage shaking. He blinked a few times when the vehicle stopped moving completely. He continued on his way up the pathway to the school. Feeling slightly more awake now he was out of the awful heating, he hopped up to the school building. Getting early had become a usual for him. It was rare that Shinsu was not the first to his class unless his bus ran late. That hadn't happened since his second week. He pushed through the door and peered round 1A's door hoping the pro hero would be there. He was. Granted, he was grabbing papers meaning he had marking to do. Half of their homeroom was Mike Sensei ranting about how much he had. It would be for the best to sneak out now before Eraser had noticed him. Luck wasn't on his side. Are you going to stand by the door or not? He slinked up to look at Shinsu, unless you want to ask what you originally came here for. Hayadashi nodded, the sports festival's coming up. I know that. I don't stand a chance. I need this to get into the hero course and I don't have a chance because my quirk isn't physically and. He took a deep breath in, I have the body structure of a noodle. Why did you come for me then? Izawa asked, you could easily go to the gym and work out if it's your strength you're worried about. I'm not interested in the sob story, I didn't expel my students to take on another one. Then maybe you don't understand. Fuck, what was he doing? The statement seemed to have caught the man's attention. He looked round to see him again look. I'm never going to be all might. I need to be more like you to stand a chance and no gym is going to give me that chance. You don't have to but at least let me prove it to you. He got a huff, I'm not training anyone with zero potential. How desperate are you to do this? Very. Great, you have a week to land a hit on me. Anything's allowed, get your friends in on it. If you get caught by another teacher or something and get a detention you have to deal with it. Shinsu nodded, that sounds like a deal. He turned back around and let the teacher through. Shinsu just had to get a hit on him huh? How hard could that be? He headed to the homeroom and pushed the door open. Like always he was the only one in there which was the best thing that could have happened. Sleeping in chaos was a given when you grew up jumping home to home. A quiet house was a rarity. He had never gotten better at working in the noise though. It would drown out the consistent sound of his pencil scratching. In an empty classroom, no one could try and disturb him unless they were coming in. He used his English book. Out of all the teacher present Mike would be the most empathetic. He wasn't failing his subject, hopefully his many plans on how to punch a teacher would be more humors than not. Plan 1 was the simplest in theory but the hardest in reality. Punching Izawa while he was off guard would never happen. No matter how much coffee Eraser had had been deprived of, he always had the reflexes to catch a wrist. Plan 1, was too hopeful and Shinsu prided himself in being a realist. Plan 555 included stealing sleeping drafts. He would stay by his hospital bed and punching him the second he got conscious. The only issue with that in Hitashi's eyes was the fact he couldn't shoot a blow dart. Morals be screwed, Izawa said he could do whatever he wanted. It was on the fourth day he finally figured out what would work. As break time drew in Shinsu grabbed Midoriya. I need you to do something for me. He started. What can I do to help you Shinsu-kun? Midoriya asked confused why he had been stopped from getting to wherever he was heading. Shinosu grinned, we're camping out at lunch by 1A. You need to distract Eraser head for as long as you can and don't let him look behind you. I'm sorry what? Shinsu what are you planning? Shinsu grinned and let go. He didn't explain. Lunch time came round. Midoriya, like the gem he was, headed over to 1A. When he looked over his shoulder, he realized he had lost Shinsu. He pulled his phone out and sent a message. Midoriya Izuku, where are you? Shinsu Hitashi, round the corner. PLS don't question me. Midoriya Izuku, I am questioning you. I just wanted to eat my soba, double frowny face, Shinsu Hitashi, your soba can wait. He's coming put your phone away. Izuku did put his phone away and from where Shinsu stood he could see Izawa heading towards him at a rapid speed. His freckled friend ran out into the hallway and straight into the teacher. I am so sorry. He started to babble with his arms, accidentally on purpose knocking the coffee out of his hand. He got down on his knees with the teacher and started to scramble through his bag for a cloth. 
Shinsu took this as his time to strike. With the crowd of people coming he slipped into it. He passed the teacher but instead of stopping and offering help, Hitachi did the thing he came to do. He slammed his fist into eraser head's back. It sent him flying straight into the coffee spilled on the floor. He then tapped his shoulder and smirked at the pro hero. When and where do we meet? He expected to receive a stern talking to at least, if not a detention. Not for his hero to grin back, with appalling teeth. It was as if he was proud that his face was just slammed into a puddle of his own beverage. Jim Gamma, straight after school in your game's uniform. Don't be late. Right. Hitashi noted before he pulled Midoriya off from the floor, we should get going now. Someone was still salty over not eating their soba if he hasn't been shell-shocked. Midoriya shook his head, I think the soba can wait. You need to explain why you weren't just expelled for attacking a teacher. Hello there listeners. Present Mike called, now for those of you who do not know the UA Sports Festival is coming up. 1C My Homeroom, is trying to get into the hero course. Now one of them wrote down every possible way to punch the hero course teacher as part of warning the training. He grins down at the English book that lies on the table, he described them all in his English workbook. Because I'm a nice teacher I didn't give him a detention. However, I am not merciful so I decided to read them all out. Listener if you hear me, I think option 12 would have saved the cleaner's time. Back in his room, with the radio off, Shinsu Hitashi sneezed. Chapter 12 Izuku Midoriya becomes a pebble in a water and creates a ripple effect that supposedly affects the world's ocean but he also mucks around in a group chat and that's most the chapter. I'm not so different from everyone, it was titled. Swiping left was the green curly background about a boy who liked quirks, loved all might and did well at school. He wanted to be a quirk counselor even if no one thought that was his calling. It continued to describe how exceptional he was. Quotes from his teachers about how smart he was examples of his doodles, a picture of him and two other kids in their school uniforms laughing about something. The first two slides were light-hearted that you might have swiped away. The poster hoped no one did because he went on to describe his scars. The horrible patterns he would grow up with because kids were not kind and did not get any kinder. Quotes that were said to him on a daily basis were written down along with the things he would find on his desk. It wasn't okay, everyone agreed on that. So why it was okay when someone was quirkless like the kid the post was about? When Midnight read the post she handed it back and walked out threatening to go find out who caused him pain so she could murder them. Izuku tried to stop her but it was useless. He really hoped Bakugu was better at hiding his traces than he acted because you would have to make a deal with the devil to stop Nemuri from killing him at that point. Shinsu offered to join her but was turned down on the basis he didn't have an excuse to kick villains and accidentally kill them. Yurika raised her hand but spoke before she was called, can't you get arrested for that? Midnight laughed. They need heroes more than they need that scum of the earth. Trust me, Google Endeavor's death rates and you'll realize most that'll happen is a couple thousand yen fine. Nothing UA's teaching jobs can't cover. It'll be passed as a quirk accident and not much else. Endeavor's, death rates. Eureka stuttered unable to comprehend what she just heard. He only got fined. Midoriya explained, he has the highest death rates from recent heroes. I'm fairly certain there are a few vigilantes, like Stendhal, who have higher death rates but they're shipped off to Tartarus the second they're caught. He kills around one or two villains a month which is shockingly low actually. Most of it comes from lack of civilian safety. Lots of buildings on fire and all the victims are technically counted as deaths he's caused. A lot are swept under the rug of course but they're the ones people have counted. Shinsu hummed, you'll do it as well probably. Don't know many limelight heroes who don't. As long as you are not careless you'll be able to save more lives than you kill. But. I can't kill people. Present Mike placed a hand on her shoulder, listener, it's okay to make a mistake in your career. No one in Xiao's class goes on to become an endeavor. You'll do just fine. You are going to save so many more lives than you'll end. I believe in you. You're sure. Certain. Now, how about we change the topic to how the post is doing. Present Mike said swapping the subject. Izuku looked up from his post. The activity had blown up thanks to the teachers all sharing the slides on their story because it was some of their students' passion projects. Their followers were already exploding while the likes were growing steadily. He scrolled up to see the shares they were receiving were blowing up. Most of them were just the title slide. A few had a comment about why people had to read the story. 
One of them made him tear up. Midoriya wiped the tears on his sleeve and smiled. Shinsu leaned over his shoulder as he read the paragraph that had been written. He nudged his friend but that only made Izuku tear up more. What's up listener? Mike asked while Yurika moved over to look over his shoulder. Can I read this out? He asked looking at his teacher. With a nod of approval, he read out. Please read this post. I may not be quirkless myself but my little brother is. This is so important to us, as in my family, because despite only being seven we have been told to move away, or to prepare for his funeral already. People move away from us in the streets and several people have given me condolences for having a useless brother instead of someone who might get somewhere in life. People act as if the government helps us but most of it doesn't really help him. The issue of the system is another issue I am very glad to see this guy fighting over to prove people can. My brother cried when he saw the UA uniform even if being a hero had never ever been his aspiration. My teachers shared that this was just kids being kids but when I look at that kid's back I know this isn't going to get better for him and the bruises are only because his friends don't have their full potential so far. This guy is doing God's work for families like us. UA is supporting him and we need to do so as well. Izuku wiped a tear away, I'm making a change Mike Sensei. People are listening to me. Shinsu nodded as he swiped up, DM the guy about it. Share with him how you got into UA filled with spite and determination. Izuku shook his head, I can't. I don't know what I'd say. He leaned his head on Shinsu's shoulder, anyways there are several other paragraphs and DM requests and comments we need to read first. We can get to it already. Yurika pulled away. Holy moly you really weren't joking? We're famous. Come on Midoriya show us everything else you have here. Izuku and look on your own damn phones. Wait first name basis. Yeah, I mean we're really doing this together. Now get your own phone out I want to continue looking at all of these. Yeah okay Izuku. Shinsu drawled as he pulled out his own phone from his pocket and began to scroll through the comments. He tapped away at the keyboard as his phone let out the clicking sounds. Izuku pulled his phone away and peered over his shoulder. You need help responding to a few. He asked. Shinsu shook his head. You don't want to read some of these. People are dicks. He reasoned only to be met my Midoriya pouting. I need to get used to it. I'm going to read it. Izuku said as he pulled the comments up and started to scroll through them all. Boost was a vast majority of them while others were threads on how brave he was for speaking up. None of them warmed his heart but they weren't malicious. Then he saw the comment Shinsu was talking about. Some people really hated new ideas didn't they? Midoriya scowled as he read the comment. He spoke up the words so the rest of the group could hear him. Look, no offense to the kid or anything, those scars couldn't have been pretty to get and I'm not saying he deserves any of the shit those kids did to him but we can't just let him become a quirk counselor. Science can get us far and all but we reached our peak years ago in technology. I would not trust him to tell me how my quirk works because he has never experienced having a quirk and therefore cannot emphasize what having a quirk is like and the issues that come with having a hard to control quirk such as government restrictions on being able to use a quirk or not. The quirkless are evolutionary dead ends. They cannot contribute to society as they hardly pass as humans anymore. Nothing against them at all of course but we need to remember why people with strong quirks are in power. They are the most powerful and can have the most opportunities. All Might is only All Might because of his quirk etc. They cannot do anything as well as those of us with quirks tailored to the job we decide to pursue. I really hope this boy the best of recoveries because no one deserves that but that UA uniform belongs to someone who can succeed in life. Shame UA us letting the public dictate this. Heroes in the good old days would have said no for safety reasons. I'm responding. Izuku stated as he pulled up the art. He needs to know more about hero history, the first ever heroes had weak quirks even though they were considered strong at the time. Or how I cannot emphasize as if I have not consumed media where everyone has a quirk. He typed away while letting Shinsu manage the kind comments or the lesser hate comments. He clicked send and smiled. Can I read out what I read? Go for it Izuku. Yurika cheered even though he had a feeling she was already onto it. I am taking full offense. Humans have evolved over the years and humanity is not defined by our quirks. That's a radical quirkiest point of view which would never work because those like you would be at the middle rung. It would never work because you are looking at placing stricter rules on what you already hate. Government restrictions. In the good old days they would have told me to focus on my physique and I could do it. 
the good old days had quirks like extending fingernails become the most dangerous weapon? Source, Heroics of the First Quirk Generation You cannot emphasize with me either. I have grown up consuming media about how a quirk, fizzled under people's skin and how it was like a wave of power. I have had to sit through classes tailored for those with quirks and how we control it. I am perfectly capable of helping one with their own quirks. Technology is placed in a stop hold because quirks are taken over but if we were really stuck why does the support department exist? I hope you watch the sports festival so you can see the wondrous creations they make. He placed his phone down and grinned at everyone. Present Mike was clapping. Well worded and calm. I'm proud of you Midoriya for that. Now, we really need to get going. We'll meet here next week to see how the account's going. Right. Yurika cheered as she stood up from sending another DM, thank you Mike Sensei. We'll post more as well and make you proud. You'll make me proud either way now Shu. The three giggled as they hoped down the steps towards their respective train stations. Izuku slammed his front door open and looked around for his mom. Inko peeked round the corner that led to their kitchen. Are you okay Izuku? She asked while her son ran towards her. In response she got one of the tightest hugs he had ever given her. Inko wrapped her arms around him instantly. What brought this on? She tried again to get a response. Her son pulled his head out of her chest and smiled. Mom. I think I'm making a difference. Inko felt tears slip down her cheeks at the revolution. Her arms tightened, allowing just enough wiggle room that Izuku could escape if he desired. His mop of hair pressed against her chest. That's amazing. Do you mind showing me what you've done? She patted his hair and smiled when Izuku nodded and wiggled out of the hug she had loosened considerably. He grinned as he pulled out his phone from his pocket and showed Inko the account he and his friends had made earlier in the school day. Inko took it from him and scrolled through the post. A small smile stretched on her lips as she read the moving words her son had wrote. She knew about most of it of course. The extent of the scarring left her hand covering her mouth. She had never known. How had she not known? Her obliviousness was expected she guessed by Izuku's straight face at her reaction because her child had hid this from her. Mom, please I didn't want you to worry. I treated them to the best of my ability and Mike Sensei has told me to go to recovery girl next time they hurt. I'll be fine and I didn't want you knowing because of your friendship with Mitsuki and I didn't want to take that from you. I know my quirklessness makes everything harder and I couldn't make it so you're isolated. Please just read the comment. Shinsu and Yurika have been doing their fair share in some of the debates but I've already changed so many people's minds. Hang on let me get up one of the threads I did before I left. He pulled up the tread and let his mum skim through it. The support course have quirks that could help them unlike, who I assume to be, you. Those from the older heroes also had to deal with less frightful quirks, making the long fingernails argument pointless. You could not just run away or train your body. Also, fiction doesn't affect reality. You can read all you want but it would never equate to having a quirk one. Melissa Shield, daughter of David Shield, All Might's old support designer, is quirkless but is predicted to be one of the most promising inventors. She is also quirkless. The inventor of the cape was from the pre-quirk era but the credit was stolen by an European at the dawn on the quirks to try and claim it as his own. Heroes also cannot rely solely on their quirk as they can easily be overcome. For example, sound mufflers easily render present mic useless. Also, fiction is not studying quirks and hearing students describe how quirks work for them. Presentation Michael and other heroes only have to do this in case of emergencies. It's rare and therefore can't be counted. Especially when they can be backed up. Shinsu replied to comment mid-debate with a comment on presentation Michael and how it came from an American misinterpreting the names, with a skull emoji next to it. Izuku continued before a fight could start over the misunderstanding because he didn't need that clogging up the comments section it happens a lot more often than you may think. I go to UA, I am friends with a hero student and taught by a hero. I can assure you now organized crime usually plans in advance for what heroes they may run into. The chain ended with the debater sending fine, I guess they aren't that bad. Inko ruffled her son's hair as she finished the chain, you handled that really well Izuku but are you sure you can 100% manage this and your schoolwork? I know the hate took a toll on you last time. Izuku ducked out of her hand and nodded, I am certain I can manage this mom. I have Shinsu and Yurika by my side and I promise I'll drop out at any point if it affects me mentally, physically, or my grades. I didn't make a huge change but that's one less person against me please don't make me drop out. 
Inko smiled, I won't as long as you promise to be careful, now how about me you set the table for dinner, do your school work then we can watch some family TV. Izuku nodded, that sounds like a plan. He headed over to the utensils draw and pulled out the chopsticks and bowls. He left by the counter. With a sponge, he wiped down the cloth in the rhythmic motions and let his mind fall back from debates he had dealt with minutes before stepping through the door. He did it more than once. It was excused as making sure the table was squeaky clean but he knew it came down to procrastination on his homework. Izuku wouldn't even deny that his real motive. Once the table was sufficiently wet, he went into his room. Shutting the door behind him, he collapsed on the bed and pulled out his phone. His homework could wait, he had none due tomorrow and he deserved this. Barking dogs seldom bite. Fre shavaca do, I'm bored and don't want to do homework. 99% your mum stalking the insta can't go online. Uwurika, damn. What can we do to help? Catnip smth, we can't. We can only watch Izuku suffer. Fre shavaca do, lies. Uwurika send me a clip of orc work I wanna analyze it. Catnip smth, you haven't. You know what forget it Izu. Uwurika, you've already analyzed my quirk. Like on the fifth day down the beach in that 10 month grace period. Fre shavaca do, what about that power up you suddenly got, zero. I wanna find out about that. Catnip smth, power up. I am sorry what? Why is a power up more important than my whole ass quirk? Fre shavaca do, it's confidential sorry. Also, I need to test URS at school, smiley face, Uwurika, that's Izuka for he wants you to brainwash him so he can analyze you. Catnip smth, I realized. Fre shavaca do, anyways, Uwurika. DMS now. Uwurika, right right. Be there now. His phone pinged as Uwurika sent him a DM. Uwurika, okay, I don't want to be rude but other than being able to hold more weight, nothing's changed. All Might isn't the best mentor and I can't expect him to be perfect but at this point it feels kind of stupid. Like coming up to the sports festival and he keeps forgetting I exist. Like he's the number one but feels like I'm being cheated on. Midoriya, he's doing his best but that sucks. Want me to help you train or SMTH? Figure out better limits etc. Eureka, I'm meant to in turn WA guy that can help. Reckon Shins will teach me some moves he learns from Izawa Sensei because man am I ready to ask. Midoriya, All Might's a very different hero and so's Eraser Head. You can't just punch your problems away or erase the inequalities of the world. You need to fly more. Like Fruwuwum in the sky. Eureka, that sounds epic. Fruwuwuming sounds epic. Midoriya, I'm gonna work on figuring out how. Send me everything you know about your quirk ASAP. He threw himself into his room desperately searching for a spare sheet of paper in order to scribble down his notes. The notebooks were either full, wrecked or in his bag and anyways. There were things he couldn't risk anyone getting their hands on. He shoved his desk clear, finding a pucka pad he tried to use once instead of the notebooks. With a satisfying tear, Izuka pulled it free and snuggled back onto his mattress again. He picked up the pen nearest and uncapped the lid. The message ping from his phone made him smile as he saw the limits of anti-gravity along with one for all. If Eureka could hold over the average amount of weight for the average human then she must be able to hold herself up and become immune to gravity's affect. She mentioned once that long jump had been easy growing up thanks to her quirk naturally affecting her body in the same way Kikens did. So the actual floating part wasn't the hard part. That was simple quirk sciences he had done in middle school. Where things got more confusing was how he would get her in the air. Alright, that's where we'll leave off for the day. Thanks so much for listening along with me today. If you enjoyed please like and comment down below. It really helps with the algorithms. I look forward to seeing you next time. Ciao for now, lovelies.